And good morning, everyone. Um, over the past year, the, the global community has become familiar with so many buzzwords. Um, I was trying to count how many of them Nirad used in his introduction. Um, you know, we have pivot, you know, digital transformation, e-commerce, contactless, virtual, and the list goes on. But as, and as a result, there have been myriad references that tout the virtual space now as really our new global reality. The fact that we are gathered in this forum virtually, I think is now is proof of that now ubiquitous online existence. And for some of us, um, this may be a welcome reality. For others, understandably, maybe the opposite. Humans are interactive social creatures. We value being in the company of others. Since 2020 in March, we've been forced to shelter in place in various forms as we seek to create an environment that is less hospitable to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which I understand is the virus, COVID is the disease. Um, unfortunately, technology has come to our rescue to bridge the gap between friends and family, between home and work, between consumers and businesses, and between governments and citizens. Not unlike many other businesses across the globe, Republic Bank has had to focus on making virtual a deeper part of our reality. Now, while it is baffling to some, it's well known that some customers like to come to branches to complete their transactions. But more importantly, I think to interact with other customers and employees with whom they become familiar. And that's a common feature of banking culture in this part of the world. So the claim that virtual is our new reality has been more of a culture shift for us in the banking environment. In the context of the pandemic, the face of banking has changed. Face-to-face -face is becoming less and less the reality. And when it does happen, that face better have a mask on it. I think the ultimate irony. Eh? Banking and other businesses now exist online or they do in so much as our local landscape will allow but how do we encourage the national community to accept this reality, not just for banking, but for every facet of life? In this context, I use the local landscape to encompass the local payment systems, businesses' ability to accept and fulfill client requests online, and importantly, government's ability to transact in an online world. Several gaps in this landscape have prevented us from pivoting as quickly and as completely as we could to live in this new paradigm and therefore I think require immediate attention. The saying, never let a good crisis go to waste, I think is apt. We should be using the challenges brought on by the pandemic to take a critical look at our local landscape and to bootstrap our various systems to allow for a more efficient society in the post COVID era, whenever that may be. Our aim should be rapid national implementation with cross-sector cooperation. And I really want to commend AmCham for the work they're doing in acting as that catalyst in, in that sort of work. No consumer, business, or government department should be left behind due to hesitation, lack of resources, or lack of knowledge. And most importantly, the virtual shift should not be viewed as a chore, but as a valued amenity, indeed a national necessity. For most businesses, there are three aspects that need reviewing, ordering, or the capability to allow for orders, processing and fulfillment, and of course, payment. And each comes with its own level of complexity and challenge. In the case of the government and government agencies, on the payment side, there exist legislative hurdles that must be overcome. I was heartened to see a recently issued circular letter from the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago advising of its consultation with market players on a proposal for a payment system bill for Trinidad and Tobago. Such consultations and the realization of the, res the resulting legislation cannot come fast enough. Truth be told though, even in the absence of these legislative enablers for government payments across the region and here at home, all manner of businesses, be they small or large, have answered the call to adapt to this new reality with varying levels of success and all have introduced a level of technology to meet their clients' needs. Now, while in this forum, we concentrate on computer-based technology and that has been in the forefront of a lot of these changes, I must also mention 
creativity and innovation are key to some of these approaches, even when they don't involve technology. And I am sure we can all remember the concept of deconstructed doubles. You know, another example that we at Republic Bank are particularly proud of is the local design and construction of several isopods by a local company, Laser Solutions Limited, for the country's regional health authorities. An isopod is an individual patient isolation system that helps transport patients who have an infectious disease. And while during the pandemic, these isopods will largely be used to transport and deal with COVID-19 patients. Post-COVID, these can also be utilized for cancer patients and even burn victims. The willingness here, the, sorry, the key here is a willingness to think and rethink our businesses and come at things from a different direction. On the services side, I am sure we have all by now experienced the convenience, and we're probably missing it right now, the likes of food drop, we eat, skip the line. We can order groceries for curbside pickup or even home delivery. And for a shameless plug, more recently, you would have seen Republic Bank introduce the contactless payment solution and cash. And I hope you've all already signed up for this. And if you haven't already, we can send you a link to that, to that app. And while these changes, I think, uh, have been a survival method for most, and maybe a knee-jerk reaction to the pandemic for some, it proves that Trinidad and Tobago has the potential to make virtual a bigger part of our reality. Virtual has infiltrated our workplaces, it has infiltrated our schools, and even our places of worship. For those who may be skeptical and suspicious of a virtual workplace, we should see the digitizing of operations not as a threat to employees, but as a way of freeing them to do more rewarding work in interacting with clients. Consumers should see it as a way to save time, which they can, vert, sorry, can divert to doing more things that they enjoy. Businesses and governments should see it as a way of enhancing employee skill sets, creating a more capable workforce and improving efficiency. It is not about removing the human element, but about enhancing it by investing in alternative work options, improving the ease of doing business and implementing contactless business solutions. At this weekend's Ministry of Health briefing on COVID-19, I heard Minister Dial Singh speak to the spinning up of an online system for registration for appointments for the COVID-19 vaccine. Immediately, I saw the opportunity for that to now be extended to a mobile-based vaccine record system, which will allow vaccinated citizens to display a certified record of their vaccination status on their smartphone. Let's not let a good crisis go to waste and let's find a way to introduce systems that can have life after the pandemic. The steps we have taken as a national community towards technological diversification, forced or otherwise, are small and growing, and they represent, I think, the willingness and the ability to strengthen Trinidad and Tobago's tech ecosystem, to improve the overall efficiency of our society, and ultimately, to grow our local economy. Republic Bank stands ready with AmCham and other sponsors to make virtual a deeper part of Trinidad and Tobago's reality. And it is once again, our pleasure to be associated with the Tech Hub Island Summit. I thank you.